Have I been wrong this whole time about cheap guitars? Hey everybody, Jay Allen here. Welcome back to the channel. So about a week ago on the Average Joe's Gear Talk, Joe did a quick video about a special that Amazon was having on the Gear It Thinline Telecaster style guitar. And so I went to Amazon to check it out and noticed that the Olympic White Stratocaster style guitar with uh, the little mini amp uh, gig bag and all that stuff was also on sale. And so I pulled the trigger on that because uh, it was actually about half price. Uh, it was listed for $139.99. I got a, a savings of $70, so I basically got it for half price. So the grand total was just under $75. And I had purchased the uh, metallic gray one I think it was back in April I got that uh, guitar and I got that one for just under a hundred so this one is actually a little bit better deal the metallic gray one was supposedly ash and this particular guitar is they're calling this mahogany looks like a maple neck so uh, I got it here let's check it out okay so here it is got it this afternoon from Amazon uh, it actually took about a week to get for some reason. So I placed my order for this on October 19th and got it today, which is uh, the 25th. So that's just shy of a week. So I'm not sure why these particular ones take so long to get. I'm pretty sure when I bought the, the metallic gray one, it didn't take that long. So uh, I did cut the tape on it. I haven't really opened it yet. So let's check it out. So it comes in the wedge shape box. Um, this is the little amp. <laughs> so it's a lot smaller than I thought. So we'll mess around with that in a little bit here. And of course you come with uh, cable, extra strings, a cleaning cloth, yep, strap, tuner, strap tuner, uh, Allen wrench, oh, picks, a little bag of picks and course your tremolo and actually the uh, as I said before on the other review the guitar cables not too shabby not as thin as some of the really really cheap ones so we'll actually use that for the demonstration to see how it sounds and it comes in a gig bag gig bags not I mean it's not great it's not super padded but it's got, you know, handles in the backpack style straps and then a handle at the top. So it's pretty decent. Enough to do what it's supposed to do, which is to allow you to carry your guitar somewhere without it getting too damaged. Um, okay, so already I can tell this is way more yellow looking than I thought. In the picture on Amazon, it looks more like Olympic white. Oh, big, big, big ding in the headstock already. I noticed there. Um, okay, so let's check this thing out. Average Joe, when he got his telly, it was basically unplayable. Um, so not sure what was going on there, but we'll see what's going on with this one. So yeah, right away, big, huge ding in the headstock, a little chip right out of the headstock. Okay, other than that, it's heavy. So it, uh, the weight is good. Uh, the neck is pretty nice looking. Everything else looks okay. The paint job looks all right. No, everything else looks pretty good, but yeah, it's really super yellow compared to the picture. Neck is maple. The fretboard is supposedly rosewood. That's the thing about some of these really, really super cheap guitars is that the specs on them are usually very not accurate. So frets of the ball and rounded frets. String trees are fairly decent looking. Tuners are just the vintage style. They're probably super cheap. The neck plate looks like it's not quite in the right spot. Like it's, there's a lot of head space up here. Pit guard looks nice. It's that greenish 
looking pick guard. Uh, this is a push pull so that humbucker can be split. Switches are good. Uh, and the pickups, um, single coil, just as classic single coil. This is the GST 100. And the metallic gray one that I got before was the GST 200 SoCal series. This is the Mission series. And uh, yeah, really no other specs on this. Uh, not great reviews either on this one. So I got it mainly for the body because I'm going to do, I'm going to probably put in, I'm going to try to get a, like a made in Mexico fender neck and put it on this or a, like a fender certified neck from a guitar fetish or something and see if it'll fit that, uh, that would be interesting. Um, so I got it for that. I mean, you basically can't buy, you know, a painted finished body, you know, blank body for less than a hundred bucks. And this was 70, $75. So plus the pickups should be fairly decent. They were pretty good on the, on the metallic gray one. And then things like the Jack cup and the, uh, strap buttons and the, I think the bridge is probably going to be fairly decent on this. Uh, let's see if the, uh, thing actually threads on. Yep, it does. So the screws, the screws on the, on the bridge are a little uneven. They didn't, you know, they didn't screw them in consistently. Nice paint job, but there's a couple little pits right there and the, I wasn't really a fan of the headstock look on these anyway so that's one of the reasons why I would probably change that so okay let's uh, talk about some of the details here action at the 12th fret is oh my supervisors here come on you want that Go play with that down there. Okay, so let's see, millimeters, we're gonna do millimeters, 2.25, so it's a little high uh, on the E. Low E, high E is about the same, 2.25. So not terrible, but not great. Neck is pretty flat, I'm guessing it's a 12 inch fret radius. So I will grab the 12 inch gauge right now and check it out. Oh yeah, that's, well, yeah, that's pretty close to 12. So pretty flat, pretty flat fretboard. I mean, it's pretty flat. Uh, stainless steel frets on this one. Like I said, the rounded ends. I mean, the neck's not terrible. It's just the headstock is really ugly. Has a small trim block in it, of course. Humbucker, two single coils. Uh, the nut. So it's one and 11 sixteenths. So they're using fender spec on that. And then the scale length is probably 25 and a half, I'm guessing. Yep, 25 and a half. All right, so let's uh, plug this in and uh, see how it sounds. You gonna help? Okay, so it's horribly out of tune, of course. So let's tune, tune this up. Okay, so I've got it tuned up but right away. I think it might have some intonation issues because open chords sound a little Okay, let's check the intonation on here. Whoop, 12th fret, that might help. Okay, so the high E is sharp. Whoa, the B, B is really sharp. Check that out. Oh, that's way sharp. 
<laughs> that's way sharp too. And the thing is, these saddles have to go back. And uh, we'll see if we can go back far enough to actually intonate it. So yeah, it's way sharp. Everything's sharp on it, so. <laughs> so, okay, so I'm going to intonate this before I go any further. Otherwise, it just doesn't, I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. So uh, we'll do that real quick. Telly style that I had back, I don't know, this spring, whenever it was, it's the same model that Joe just reviewed and I could not get that one to intonate at all. So we'll see what happens with this one. I was pretty happy with the, uh, the gray one that I had though. That one actually sounded pretty good. So what usually happens with these is you try to intonate it and the saddle will bottom out at the end of the uh, bridge here to a point where you can't go back any further and then it just won't, then it won't intonate. So, but I also know that uh, strings will affect that as well. Let me see what these strings are. So if you change string weights, that will also affect it. And these are eights, so these are pretty light. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't use these. It's not going to intonate. Okay, now well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna change the strings on it. I want to open this up anyway and see, see what, uh, what it's made of. Okay, so these are tens, and that's usually what I prefer. So let's just cut these right off. And uh, while I've got, might as well take the neck off too and see what is going on underneath. Okay, so back cavity is painted. Uh, I can see a little bit of wood down there and it does look like it's probably mahogany. I should really power drill. And the neck joint is pretty horrible. <laughs> they did some finagling on that to get it, to get it right, to get it to fit right. Yeah, that's a horrible, absolutely horrible neck joint. And they actually shaved down some of the, uh, pit guard too to get it to fit. I mean, this is just terrible, terrible work there. <laughs> it's almost like I can't get it back in there. Oh, actually, you know what? It doesn't seat all the way back into the, that's, that's interesting. It doesn't actually seat. They took that wood off, but it doesn't actually fit tight. That's not good. <laughs> wow. Here's the neck pocket, which looks pretty good. It doesn't look like they did any handy work on it after the fact. Uh, the, you know, the radius is 
in these corners look pretty good. They feel pretty good. It feels like a proper, you know, neck pocket. But then look at where these holes are. They're, they're definitely too far back. They should be, they should be more centered in there. So then look at this neck, how badly butchered that is. So then watch this, when you put it in where it fits, see the gap? So that's where it fits, but it doesn't, it doesn't actually fit tight into the neck pocket. So the screws are what's holding it, you know, out. <laughs> So there's no, I mean, there's no, there's no contact between the neck and the, the pocket, the back of the neck heel and the pocket. That's about a, that's a good eighth of an inch, I would say. A good, there you go, there you can see it good now. There's a good eighth of an inch of space between the end of the heel, between the end of the heel here, and the inside of that look i can stick the screw screwdriver down in there that's a good eighth of an inch gap uh so so yeah so your neck isn't fitting tight in there but you know i can remedy that with you know i can make a neck for this if i wanted to keep this body uh, but i don't know maybe this thing will go back we'll see we'll see if we can get it to intonate so we can actually tune it up and play it. And if it'll do that, then, you know, then you've got something to work with. But if you can't intonate it, then, what's up boss? You gonna help, you gonna help lose these screws for me? This is Stanley. You haven't seen him on the channel before the, the more recent videos because he was upstairs and I didn't let him down here. And then we decided to let him down one day. Um, and now he's obsessed with coming down here. Plus there's mice. Yeah, I'm in the basement, so there's mice in here because it's now fall and the farmer took the beans off the field and so he has to come down here all the time and hunt mice. And chew on my cables and knock stuff off my shelves and chew on guitar strings. So, I don't know. I'm... <laughs> I keep doing reviews on cheap guitars, but I don't have a huge budget to spend on more expensive gear. And I know there's a huge community around cheap gear, and a lot of people will buy gear to mod it. Um, so I guess that's what keeps me doing this. And I've been lucky so far. I've, I've gotten some good deals, and I've gotten some decent guitars. Uh, one guitar that comes to mind is the Ariga that I reviewed. Got that from Amazon. Full thickness body. Uh, Poplar. Great neck. Great intonate. You know, was able to intonate it. Very well made. And uh, just had sharp fret ends. Um, but then lately I've been getting, you know, like these. And then the super cheap um, uh, Obenye, Obenye, whatever they were those uh those were kind of disappointing so all right let's string this up and see what happens so it seems to be intonating with the heavier strings there's the low e so it actually could come forward a little bit so it's actually so it actually could be probably let out a little bit the saddle which is good news. That means the bridge is in the right spot. So I lowered the action, uh, filed the nut slot down a little bit, made sure I angled towards the headstock when I did so. 
Um, these tuners aren't the best either. So that could come out a little bit too. And it seems that tuning stability is a little better with uh, the heavier strings. Okay, so we're able to intonate it. That's good news. So let me finish putting the rest of these strings on and then we will give it a try. So right out the gate, <laughs> my $75 guitar, if I didn't know how to do this, I probably would have spent another 50, 60 bucks to take it to Guitar Center or wherever I could take it to if you're even near a place that can do guitar setup. So there's some more money. Definitely, you know, a pair of strings is what, $12? But you're going to need strings eventually anyway. And the strings that come on them aren't, aren't the best. And it's funny, now the tuners feel better with the heavier strings too, because there's probably more tension. So it almost feels like tuning accuracy is better now that it has a heavier set of strings on it. Okay, I think that sounds, well, it sounds way better than it did. It's still, but it could be string stretching. So that's the humbucker. Uh, here's the split coil. I like that tone. Ooh, strings are, or the frets are pretty gritty for being stainless. <laughs> Another thing. This is a, a fat neck. <laughs> this thing is pretty fat. Not to get off on that, but. Okay, so that's the split coil. It sounds pretty good. Let's switch to the, would be second position. seem like they're pretty hot. I actually like them. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, this would be fourth position. So middle and uh, neck. Pickups sound really good. I think those are just uh, ceramic too because they're not staggered. Um, they must be wound really, really. That 
neck pickup really actually sounds better than the throw a little bit of distortion in here and see. So the tremolo is actually not bad. This one seems to function okay. not too bad not too bad uh, I think what I'm gonna do with this one is put a new neck on it or build a neck for it that'll fit but I'm gonna I'm interested to see if they've used the fender specs on these if a fender neck or a squire neck or something would fit into there um, because the I mean the neck pockets fine everything's fine on it, it intonated you know um, so as long as I put a probably a fender neck on it with the correct fret spacing and 25 and a half inch scale length, then it should be all right. Now I, I think the string height could be lowered a little bit more yet too, but this neck feels awful thick, um, you know, width wise this way, not that way. <laughs> So there you go, that's it. That's the Gear It, Gear IT Mission Series GST 100. It's me again. I got so distracted with that guitar that I forgot to uh, check out the little amplifier that came with it as part of uh, the package. And uh, so let's check that out real quick. So there it is, just a little tiny amp, and uh, let's see, oh, Bluetooth, uh, headphone, DC 5 volt, which I believe is this, which is probably a yep, uh, USB-C, and it'll probably need... power yep and there's an aux in and the bluetooth i guess you can connect to it as a bluetooth speaker it seems let me see if i can plug this into my computer and get power yep i can okay so there's bluetooth aux yes yeah, so you can bluetooth into it to play like practice tracks or whatever and then you've got a so you've got bluetooth volume or aux in there's a mini jack, 3.5 millimeter jack in the back for aux in, uh, 3.5 millimeter jack for headphones. So you could uh, Bluetooth into this and, uh, you know, put your headphones on, Bluetooth into it, stream your music to it, and then practice with it apparently. So then there's volume tone, a clean and overdrive button, and then a gain knob, and then your quarter inch input. So let's see. 
Okay, there's the... So you turn the... Oh, okay, so the volume is also power on. I don't know if it's got a battery in it. Maybe it does. Let's unplug it. See if it... Oh, it does. It's got an internal battery. That's cool. <laughs> Not much volume. <laughs> break up there it sounds surprisingly good I'm out of tune again of course Pretty impressive that it actually sounds halfway decent. Huh. Yeah. Not bad. I'm I'm actually pretty impressed with that for just a little. Oh, it's it's got two speakers in it, so it's a stereo. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. It's uh, it'd be good for you know just practicing in your bedroom or at the kitchen table. Okay, anyway, I just thought I'd go over that real quick because uh, that came with the, the guitar. Uh, so if the guitar was able to be played straight out of the box and this little guy came with it, then that'd be a great setup for a kid or a beginner player. Uh, you could just sit down with this little, little amp. I mean, you paid 75 bucks for the whole thing you get that little practice amp uh put your headphones on and practice with your headphones uh so yeah i was just kind of disappointed that the guitar itself uh wasn't quite set up and playable out of the box that you needed to mess around with the intonation on it but you know it it wasn't a, a deal breaker i mean it wasn't like it was so uh screwed up that it couldn't be played uh, so, you know, and they do provide you with the Allen wrenches and everything like that. So you could go online, I guess, and look up how to do it. But it's, you know, something that I think should be, you know, somewhat done and ready to go, um, by, by whoever makes it, you know, uh, there it is a uh, little update quick on the amp. So the amp is good. Uh, this is uh, the Gear It Strat style guitar um, uh, Mission Series GST100. Check it out on Amazon. Uh, and again, Jay Allen Guitar. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.